There are many ways to get to the Lookout of the Cross, locally known as the Mirador de la Cruz, for panoramic views of the city and the bay. However, the shortest and most direct way to the Lookout is up Abasolo Street, or Calle Abasolo. If you start at the Body Surfer statue on the Malacan, it's only approximately 0.62 kilometers to the top of the Mirador, and that's equivalent to approximately 0.4 miles. So if you walk at a leisurely pace, it'll take you under 20 minutes to get to the top. If you want to stop a few times and take in the views, I say it shouldn't take you any more than about 30 minutes. So from this picture, you can see the lookout. It's a platform and you can see it's on top of the hill. So the first thing you do is head up Abasolo Street until it turns into a walkway and the walkway will end at Carranza Street. So it's a quick jog to the left and then back up the street, Abasolo, which will take you directly to the base or the stairway to the Mirador. The hike is not overly difficult, but there are numerous stairs to climb, such as this walkway that you see here. And then once you get to the top of Abasolo Street, there is 277 steps to make it right to the top. So this particular walkway up Abasolo Street actually ends on Carranza. So once on Carranza, you'll proceed left and then take an immediate right, which will put you right back onto Abasolo or Calle Abasolo. And it's a straight shot up Calle Abasolo to the base of the Mirador walkway or stairs. I love the architecture and the flowers in this area. Actually, the whole hike, especially this walkway, is pretty spectacular and so enjoyable to take. So here we are at the corner of Abasolo Street again. You can see that it's still quite a hike up, but as I said, it's not overly difficult. It's uh, just a lot of stairs or inclines that you need to do before getting up there. There is not a lot of traffic on the street, but there is a sidewalk to the right that a lot of people use. And the reason that there's not a lot of uh, traffic is that uh, at the top, there really is a dead end. There, it's under construction right now. It used to be only a path going to the right, but it looks like they're changing it into a street and possibly developing some of the lots on the hill. So anyways, here are the, 200 and, or the start of the 277 steps that will lead you to the top of the Mirador. So this is a first set of steps will, which will break you to the base of an old funicular. Unfortunately, it looks like the funicular is no longer in use for pedestrians. I think it is used periodically to bring uh, supplies up to a coffee shop they have now, but that's about it. So uh, only way up is to use these stairs at all 277. 77 of them. Uh, if you take a break and rest be at different levels, you won't find it uh, very strenuous. So the first set of steps is uh, 100 steps in total, and that takes you to the base of the funicular. And now you need to do 177 more steps at, from the base of the funicular to the top where the coffee shop is located. So the stairs are in great condition. They have handrails. They're a bit of a switchback. There's not too many areas which are like a landing that you can sort of sit at. Uh, so uh, you need to keep going and moving, especially if uh, there's people there. But uh, Mexican people and most of the tourists here are pretty polite. And if you need to take a rest, uh, I would do that. And obviously just turn around every once in a while because the views even from the stairs uh, are fantastic. You have now reached the top or uh, the base level of where the, the Mirador is. They've got this beautiful mirror on the wall and if you go up one slight little level, there is the coffee shop. They serve uh, just coffee. I think they also have some alcohol, beer for example. And uh, if you get early there early enough, they generally have a few muffins and croissants and so forth as well. I'm not sure what the hours of operation for the coffee shop is, but uh, generally it's open around noon and uh, I'm generally never there after about two o'clock, so I can't tell you when it closes. But they have a few tables uh, along the, the railing, which is a great place to hang out and just check, take in the sights.
So this is called the Mirador de la Cruz, or Lookout of the Cross. What's neat about this particular lookout is that, one, yes, you can look at uh, the Bay of Banderas and the city, but if you look through the backside, you can see the Sierra Madre Mountains, you can see the Quale River, and you get a really good impression of uh, what this town is all about. One of the things that I really like about this town is that it's nestled between the ocean and the Sierra Madre Mountains, therefore it is actually quite narrow which has the advantage of it's very easy to navigate. Um, when I say navigate, uh, I'm talking about transportation. Uh, bus routes are generally in one direction from north to south. There's not a lot of roads uh, from east to west, so it's easy to catch a bus to get from one location to the next. Now, having said that, there are roads that run east to west, and those are generally into mountain valleys or along rivers that come out of the mountains. So this is your first view of the platform at the Mirador de la Cruz. You can see that it's a series of stairs to really two lookout levels, a lower and a higher level. Uh, I don't see too many people use the middle level, although it is quite nice. Uh, I like to go there, especially on a hot day because it's quite shaded. And um, then, but most people will go to the top, which offers you the best lookout. Now, another interesting thing about the Mirador de la Cruz is that it's quite large and it's a uh, regularly shaped and they have a lot of sitting area so if you wanted to hang out uh, this is a good place to just sit back kick back and check out the views So let's go check out the two different levels of the uh, lookout platform. It's just a couple of different uh, stairways up to them. And uh, you can see that uh, this lookout platform is very modern, very stylish. I'm not sure who the architect was, but I think he did an, an excellent job. And as I said, the reason you really want to go up here are views like this. Uh, you've got an unobstructed view of the entire Bay of Banderas. I believe it's about uh, 14 miles out to get outside the bay. There's the Marietta Islands at the end of the bay, and it's uh, it, on a very clear day you can actually see those from here and I've been told it's approximately uh, on the order of uh, 15 or even 20 kilometers across the bay from Nuevo Vallarta into the south coast although I have never verified that myself You can see from this video that there is a number of people also doing what we are doing, which is checking out the views from up here. But it's not overly crowded, and I like the fact that they actually have two observation decks. So uh, if you're here, you can get out and you can uh, see the sights without being overly, uh, I guess, encumbered by other people also doing the same thing. So this is the top observation platform and you can see the north side of the bay to my right and to my left is the south side of the bay and directly below us you can see the city of Puerto Vallarta. You also can see these radio towers here. I'm not sure if it's just radio, they may be for television as well or internet. The views are sp uh, spectacular. It's uh, actually breathtaking here. I think a lot of people come up here and just hang out for an hour or so and really enjoy it. It's uh, not uncommon when the whales are in the bay, which they are now, to actually spot them from up on this tower. So another reason to come up here, not only check out the city, but uh, hopefully spot some whales from this high vantage point. Unfortunately, this time I did not spot any whales in the bay, but uh, hopefully the next time. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, please like and subscribe, and check out all my other videos about Puerto Vallarta.